Shein is in hot water again. Shein is huge. It did 100 billion in sales in 2022, up from 10 billion in 2020, but it has a bit of an image problem. A lot of people think that Shein exemplifies the worst of the world of fast fashion. It's cheap clothing, bad environmental impact, and an exploited labor force. But Shein is, uh, is eyeing an IPO, so in an effort to clean up that image a little bit, they invited a bunch of fashion influencers out to visit one of their 6,000 factories in China. Here's a quote from one of the, one of the influencers. Honestly, everyone was just working like normal, sitting down. They weren't even sweating. <laughs> and, and everyone in her comments just absolutely ate her up saying, you're only seeing what they want you to see and that your integrity is worth, worth more than this trip is. And the backlash came in swift and fast, so much so that some of the creators were actually deleting some of these paid uh, posts in partnership with Shein. And Shein comes out looking worse from a consumer yeah. perspective than they went in. We've seen these influencer trips go awry, but this one seemed to really strike a nerve, Neil. Right, because what it was wasn't usually influencer trips, and I have to say I didn't know a lot about influencer trips before reading about this. It's you go and you try on the actual products. You're like, look at this shirt. You know, this is a cool shirt or this is a cool pants or this is a cool product that I'm trying out. This was influencers like talking about the labor practices and the social culture of a company. Mm -hmm. And people were like, this is a very ambitious move by Sheen to clean up its image. And it completely backfired. I mean, I saw one TikTok uh, that satirized this trip. Yeah, it, it was an influencer saying that they went to the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory in New York, which infamously burned down <laughs> and killed, you know, over 140 people. And this influencer was parroting this Sheen trip was like, oh my God, the labor practices are so good here. Right. Everything's so clean. You can leave. And, yeah. uh, and that was kind of the vibe that uh, the backlash took. Yeah. And another layer too is like, this was a very carefully curated group of six content creators who they represented like a, an array of different body types and backgrounds. And so a lot of people were like, Shan is clearly just exploiting totally. like diverse influencers in order to advance like this narrative. And so that's another reason, like another layer to it, why people were just really seeing through like this ploy from Shein. Maybe we should talk about what the criticisms of Shein are. Their sustainability criticisms that, you know, most of their uh, most of their clothing just ends up in landfills, mm -hmm. which is a criticism that's been lobbed at the broader fast fashion industry. And then there the big one here that the actually US Congress is looking into is that they're using cotton from the Xinjiang province in uh, China, which uses forced labor by the Uyghur Muslim minority. And the US has banned imports mm -hmm. from that region. And because of there's there's this particular loophole that if you ship a uh, you know, product to the US that's below eight hundred dollars, it does doesn't get checked by Customs and Border Protection. And most Shein hauls are very <laughs> cheap, like $3. Right. So they are not subject to that. And therefore, they can kind of use sketchy materials and pl things from places that the U.S. has banned mm -hmm. to get in. And then when Bloomberg kind of tested the products, they took it into the lab. They were like, yep, this cotton is from Xinjiang province. And, you know, Sheen is completely skirting the rules. So lawmakers from both sides of the aisle are trying to crack down on on this. Yeah, company. we'll definitely see how kind of this controversy uh, plays out in context of their impending IPO. They're there's no like set date for it or anything, but they want to IPO. Is it a U.S. IPO? They they were uh, looking at because Congress wants the SEC to look into it. So I do think it would right, happen right, right. in uh, in the U.S. But it's it was valued at one point at 100 billion dollars. So like this is a big big yes. company we're talking about. So it's crazy again the ripple effect of one influencer trip could uh, factor into a 100 billion dollar IPO. Hey. Thanks for watching, and if you want more Morning Brew Daily, make sure to hit that subscribe button, and also check out the rest of our episodes wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes drop at 7 a.m. Eastern, Monday through Friday, and you can email us at morningbrewdaily at morningbrew.com.